Hello everyone. So now we'll be taking up the next topic that is SA 520 analytical procedures. Uh, for intermediate, this becomes a very important topic. Uh, and that is the reason we have this as a part of theory as well as a standard on it. Okay. So in the regular classes, I have already explained to you the concept of analytical procedures. But now I'll just go back to it again so that you get a link correctly. Now, analytical procedures are those procedures adopted by the auditor during the course of the audit, which will help him do some kind of comparison. Okay, like we have uh, the ratio analysis to be done. We do trend analysis. We do reasonableness check, etc. So what happens here is basically, if I give you an example, uh, suppose if you are uh, you know comparing two years data, or maybe uh, let us take an example of a five years a trend analysis that we are doing. So what happens is maybe year on year, there has been an increase in the sales figure by 5%. Okay. So you saw in the year uh, 2019, uh, there was an amount of sales, 2020 plus 5%, 21 plus 5%, 22 plus 5%. It was, uh, you know, the average was 5%. So maybe it was 5%, 6%, 5.5%, uh, 7%, something like that. So on an average, when we took it, we had an average percentage increase of 5% every year. What happens is, suppose in the current year, when you're comparing it like this, you see there is a sudden increase of 12% in the sales figure. Now here, this sudden increase of 12%, don't you think will give an indicator to the auditor that there is something wrong in the figures of sale? See, there could be a possibility that the uh, you know organization has come up with some new product and you know major competitor must have actually uh, gone off. Okay, uh, Or maybe they are starting getting a good deals from the suppliers, so the margin is maintained very well. Okay, or they could reduce the price because of which there was a lot of sales that was happening. So there could be a genuine reason because of which sales have been inflated. So there is a possibility, a real good reason for the sales to go up. But tell me as an auditor, when you see a sudden fluctuation like this, a sudden increase where every year you saw that average 5% was the increase. All of a sudden you're seeing that uh, completely there's a different number that is 12% increase. How is this going to happen? So don't you think this is going to give you an indicator that something could be wrong? So this would be an indicator of risk of material misstatement? Yes. So in this case, what you will do is you will then go and communicate with the management, talk to them and understand why is there a sudden increase in the percentage of sales in the current year? Maybe there could be a possibility that the management could have a genuine answer behind it and there could be a really an increase in sales. Maybe they've launched a new project which has been successful in the market. That also could be a reason. Okay, maybe the competitor of yours is gone completely off. So you're the only one in the market enjoying the monopoly, correct? So that also could be there. But there could also be a reason that this year, maybe they have tried to manipulate the figures. Maybe they want a loan or maybe they're going in for a public issue because of which they want to show themselves to be very healthy in the market. So there could be a possibility of window dressing also because of this. So this what the auditor has done, the kind of analytical checking, that means he has compared the two particular uh, you know, years or maybe the five years he created a trend. And this what helped him, helped him decide that there could be an indicator of something which could go wrong. And this enabled him to perform the audit. audit. Uh, you know, this would help him do something which he could not be done in the regular audit processes. So what is regular audit process? You do the detailed checking of transaction, you do verification, you do vouching. But this is something, a unique method given to the auditor, which will enable him to come out uh, he, to, you know, locate some things which could not happen during the routine processes that he's applying. Okay. So this is called as analytical procedures where we could compare financial and non-financial data also. The auditor will try to establish a relationship between the data. It could be a financial data, that is the data we pick from the financial statements, or it could be non-financial. Now, how do I explain what is financial and non-financial? Now, assume that you want to check the... Um, amount of salaries. Okay, now you have the data available with you that a number of employees are given to you. And there is uh, average salary per employee. So when you're going to build a relationship with them, what will you do? Number of employees into the salary, average salary. When you multiply, you're going to get a figure, right? Now this amount and the amount given in your PNL account as a salary should be reasonably matching, correct? So this relationship that you So this relationship which you're establishing, Okay, this is enabling you to understand that there is some kind of fluctuation and you'll be able to decide that whether the, you know, the matching of the figures has happened or not. So here, when you talk about number of employees, they become a non-financial information. And when you talk about the amount of salary, the average salary, we call it to be a financial data. So this procedure is used by the auditor to establish a relationship between these, that is financial and non-financial data.
This will help him to, you know, to uh, come out uh, of certain fluctuations, which could give an indicator to the risk, which could be associated. And with this, he'll be able to decide the further audit procedures. All right. Now, analytical procedures can be adopted at all the three levels. That is at the planning stage, you could do it. Second, by performing the audit also, like for example, I gave you now salary that happened at the time of performing. Then you can also do it at the end. Rather, I would say it is most recommended to do it at the end. See, we apply the regular audit procedures and find out all the evidences and draw conclusions. But then before you actually draw the conclusion and prepare the report, before the end of the audit, just apply or just perform one or two analytical procedures just to ensure that what you have understood about the financial statements by now, whether it is really accurate or not. Okay, to make you a under, uh, proper understanding for this. Suppose you perform the audit using all the regular procedures, verification, vouching, everything you have done, external confirmation you obtained, uh, you have done some kind of recalculation, rechecking, you have done everything. Inspection, observation, everything you have done. But then what we say is, before you give up the final opinion, you still perform the analytical procedures. So let us take the simple example of sales. So what happened was, you were trying to, you know, you when you were performing the vouching of sales, when you're checking the transactions, you have not found any misstatement. There is no, be, there's not been a material misstatement that you've identified when you chose some of the items through sampling and you did checking and you realize that nothing is wrong. Okay. So you are with an opinion that you have sufficient appropriate audit evidence to sales to tell that the sales are not materially misstated. But now you decided to perform the analytical procedures. And at this juncture, what you're doing is you are doing the trend analysis of the last five years. And then you saw that this year there has been a sudden increase in the sales figure of, you know, by 5% so has become 12% all of a sudden. Now, this is an indicator again to you to believe that when we did the regular checking, we didn't find material misstatement. But this unusual fluctuation, something which is not regular in nature, is giving an indication that we should do some more detailed checking so that we, too, we can understand that actually there are misstatements or not. So this what you did at the end enable the auditor to understand his the financial statements even better. Rather, the opinion that he has formed, he will be in the position to decide whether the opinion that he has formed and the way he has understood the financial statement, whether it is really matching or not. Correct? So this is what we call as a part of the overall analytical procedures. The topic is very simple. We are going to uh, you know, focus on the most important parts of the you know, topic. I'll take you through slow and steady. You'll understand it. Where I'm focusing, please focus at the same places for the examination. Okay, that will be really enough for your uh, preparation level. All right. So all of you will have uh, page number uh, 8.1. That is the chapter 8, Analytical Procedures. It is also a standard essay 520. Okay. Now, first meaning of analytical procedure, I told you it is the evaluation of financial information. Obviously, we're doing audit on what? Financial statement. So ultimately, whether you compare non-financial data or you compare financial data, the evaluation that you are doing is what? Financial information only. You will not do evaluation of non-financial. You're doing evaluation of only financial information. For that, you are establishing a relationship between what? Financial and non-financial data. Correct? So they say evaluation of financial information through analysis of plausible relationship among both financial and non-financial data. Analytical procedures also encompasses such investigation as a necessary for the identified fluctuations or relationships. That means when you perform the analytical procedures, see, procedure will not give you uh, uh, this thing, sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Like analytical procedure will not give you sufficient appropriate audit evidence. It is only going to give you a further measure to apply another procedure, and that procedure will allow you to get what? Sufficient appropriate audit evidences. So analytical procedure is giving you an indicator to perform additional procedure. And that additional procedure is going to give you sufficient appropriate evidence. Basically, what is the logic we study in audit? Procedures, you get evidence. Evidence, you draw conclusion. Conclusion, you get opinion. But analytical procedure is the procedure where evidence cannot be obtained here. It is going to give an indication whether you require to perform further audit procedure so that that is going to give you what? The uh, uh, sufficient appropriate audit evidences. Got it? Then. Uh, they say the auditor's choice of procedure, method, or, method and level of application is the matter of professional judgment, correct? So whether he wants to use it or not, at what level, planning, performing, uh, you know, uh, conclusion stage, whatever, wherever he wants to use it, it is purely the judgment of the auditor, all right? Then, nature of analytical procedures, there are multiple ways, but the most regular ways that we use is comparable information for the prior periods. I give you the example of trend. So you could take the prior period items and do the trend analysis. Anticipated results in the simple language budgets. So you could do the comparison with the budgets that have been made. 
then similar industry information so you could see the gross percentage uh, gross margin percentage so maybe it is an uh, hotel industry uh, so you see the regular hotels uh, you know in that industry every hotel is generating a gross prop, uh, margin of you know maybe some five uh, percent or six percent okay but your and your uh, business is having some 12 percent or 15 percent or maybe even lesser two percent or one percent so this is something that is matching or not reasonably matching with the industry information so this would give an indicator that there could be some kind of you know um, misstatement that could be possible then analytical procedure also include relationship they have given you examples which you could go through you'll understand it now i told you what is the objective here the objective is to obtain relevant and reliable audit evidence uh, that is sufficient and appropriate audit evidence when using substantive analytical procedure and to design and perform analytical procedure near the end of the audit i told you most important is when you perform at the end of the audit reason is what conclusion you have drawn and what actually financial statements are telling whether they are really matching or not so they say to assess the auditor when perform forming an overall conclusion as to whether the financial statement are consistent with the auditor's understanding of the entity that means what the auditor has understood and what the uh, financial statements are telling whether they're really matching or not okay that we get by analytical procedures so it is done at all the three stages planning performing and uh, completion stage that is the conclusion stage so obviously planning stage will be able to identify risk of material misstatement so in the stage of planning when you're trying to understand the entity and the environment you could perform the trend analysis ratios and all you can do it so that you'll be able to decide which could be the area of risk where the auditor has to you know uh, put more uh, importance or the more uh, uh, what to say uh, more uh, procedures to be applied in that area correct then while performing, though, obviously, we're going to have analytical procedures. I gave you the example of salary, where, you know, while you're checking salary's amount, uh, instead of doing detailed checking of each and every transaction or picking up samples and doing, these are the areas where if you perform the analytical procedures, uh, it will, uh, you know, uh, bring the efforts of the auditor come down. So instead of you doing sampling and checking transactions to check material uncertainty or maybe material misstatement, uh, there could be a possibility that if you do comparison of, you know, payroll and the amount, when you multiply and you get the figure, and if it is reasonably matching with what is given in the financial statement, you could give a conclusion, yeah, salary or this kind of expenditure is properly recorded. So this would actually reduce the um, work of the auditor. So it increase the effectiveness and the efficiency of the audit. Correct? Then, uh, conclusion, it is compulsory. Rather, I would say it is most relevant to use it at a conclusion stage because uh, by performing the regular audit procedures, you'll be able to, you know, understand... Um, certain things which you know by performing analytical procedure you'll get a different impact altogether so there could be a possibility that when you picked up the samples for salary checking maybe the uh, payroll uh, payroll or the slips the you know um, salary slips or maybe the bank statements uh, the reimbursement everything which you did a checking through vouching and verification maybe you could not identify the misstatement because you chose a few of them for sampling and you checked it but then when you do the, uh, you know, the multiplication or you try to, you know, create a relationship between number of employees and the average salary, there you got to know that, no, this is not matching. So then you get an idea that, no, what salary amount I was thinking is correct and my understanding is not actually matching. That means this analytical procedure, that establishment of relationship which I did, gave me an idea that the uh, procedure which I performed on salaries is not adequate enough. That means my understanding is not correct. So this analytical procedure actually helped the auditor in understanding the financial statement even better. That means what he understood and what is actually there, whether it is correct or not. Okay, so most recommended is you do it at the end of the financial period, that is the end of the audit period. Correct? Then, very important part for the examination is factors to be considered Okay, for substantive analytical procedures. That means uh, basically at every area of audit, uh, analytical procedures will not be suitable. Like to take a simple example, uh, sales are of figures which are going to be there every year. So they are like, uh, by very nature, they're recurring and every year they're going to be there and there is going to be a predictability. So uh, every year we could increase that, yeah, 2% could increase, 5% could increase. So there could be a possibility, some kind of trend, some kind of ratio, some kind of analysis you could do over those items which are predictable over a period of time. Okay, like purchase, sales, uh, gross profit, all of these are like there every year. But suppose all of a sudden you have a particular item like, you know, insurance claim or maybe you have received a compensation from the government or something. Now that is going to happen something once in a while. So do you have any comparable information to that? No. So these are the items where you cannot do comparison. It is not possible. So not every place substantive analytical procedures will be suitable. So analytical procedures will be suitable depending upon certain factors. So which are those factors will become very important examination question. All right. So let us see first. 
those items which are predictable in nature, like income and expenses, predictable. Assets, liability is not predictable. Okay, you cannot have a kind of comparison done for the you know years or years. So predictability there we cannot say. So basically, I would consider that uh, income expenses would be a predictable item. Okay, uh, where uh, their obvious relationship is going to be existing because every income is going to have a corresponding expense. So you could have a kind of um, relationship be established. Like if I tell uh, that purchase is so much, so sales cannot be definitely, if you look at the quantity, sales cannot be more than that. See, amount will differ obviously because percentage of profit is involved. But quantity, if you're checking, then what you've purchased, that much only you can sell. So comparison can happen here because they're predictable. All right, then. For example, they're purely relationship between sales and debtors. Obviously, there has to be a relationship like that. Type of account, PL account are more, you know, a trend basis. Uh, assets and liabilities do not usually show any trend. Then routine transactions uh, can be used as analytical procedures. They can uh, analytical can be on them because predictability is there. Non-routine like insurance claims and all, there you cannot really use it because there is no comparable data only. Correct? Availability of data, very important. So if you believe you want to compare with the industry information, how can you do it? Okay, suppose uh, you are the only one person in the market or you're the monopoly and obviously the inter industry information will not be available for you. On the same line, suppose you're a new business and you want to create a trend analysis. You don't have any past years only to create a trend. So in that case, availability of information is not there. How will you perform the analytical procedures? Correct? Then, assertion, very important. See, income and expenses, uh, these measurements and all can be done through analytical procedure. But when you talk about rights and obligations, okay, whether a particular uh, entity has a right over a particular asset, obligation over a particular liability, okay, do you think at that place the analytical procedure will be suitable? No. So valuation, measurement, okay, existence, these are the places where, you know, analytical will work. Otherwise, all the assertions, analytical procedure will not work. Correct? Then, disaggregation, uh, financial statement as a whole cannot be done as a comparison. You need to break it. Okay, like entire expenses you cannot compare. You have to disaggregate it, like salary separately, rent separately. Total expense to total expense of the next year cannot be compared. The items have to be disaggregated. That means what rent and rent you can compare. Salary, salary you can compare. Commission, commission you can compare. Discount, discount you can compare. Purchase, purchase you can compare. But total expenditure, you cannot be comparing it. It makes no sense, correct? Then, inherent and control risk, both have to be taken into consideration. See, analytical procedures can be suitable when there is a lesser risk of material misstatement. If because we have already understood as a part of risk assessment topic that if the risk of material misstatement that is inherent and control risk is going to be really high, then we will go in for detailed checking. The substantive procedure will not help because substantive procedure, when you perform, when you want to, you know, understand the relationship and decide whether risk is there or not there, based on that, you will decide whether you want to apply for the procedures or not. So here where you believe inherent risk and control risk is very high, how are you going to perform a substantive analytical procedures? Because already the data that is available is not reliable. There is control risk. There is inherent risk. Okay, both are there. Then how is the data going to be reliable? So in those places where data only is not reliable, how are you going to use analytical procedure? How will you establish relationship? So there, we would not recommend that you go for analytical procedure. Rather, detailed checking will be required. Detailed verification, detailed vouching has to be done. AP will not be suitable. Correct? So these are the factors that you decide whether analytical procedures can be performed or not performed. All right? Then, which are the techniques? Uh, students usually do a mistake in reading the question wrongly. You have to read the question very carefully, whether they're asking you factors or are they asking you techniques? Techniques are the way in which you can perform. Like I gave you the example of trend analysis. Trend is a technique. Ratio, ratio is a technique. Reasonableness check. So when I'm comparing the quantity of the sales and the quantity of the purchase. So I've purchased 10,000 units and I'm selling 12,000 units. How is it possible? So there has to be a reasonableness. So 10,000 and 9,000 if I'm selling, then it is acceptable. So reasonable in this check, what you're doing is also called as what? A technique. Like that, we also have modeling tools, like linear equations are used. They're statistical tools. Then we have uh, ratios, trends, all of these. These are the techniques to perform analytical procedure. Technique will come when, when factors are telling, okay, analytical procedures can be adopted. So analytical procedures, when can be adopted, then we'll decide, okay, now which technique? Now, for example, I said, yeah, sales are the figures which are predictable, regular in nature. Okay, on this, a measurement has to be checked, that is valuation. So yes, analytical procedures can be adopted. So the factors are present where AP can be applied. After deciding that, we'll decide which technique to follow. Will we do the ratios? Are we going to calculate trend? Are we do some kind of modeling tools we are going to apply? What we are going to do? So that is the next step. So first we'll see the factors, then the technique. Okay, so first technique, trend, 
you all must be knowing you must have done as a part of statistics where you will be developing a trend and the trend will help you decide whether there is unusual fluctuation or not so whether if you have normal like normally the trend is there okay it's all reasonable we have no problem but suddenly you have slow slow slide it reaches jump that means unusual fluctuation or it will be very alert there correct then ratios so you'll be have multiple ratios you have done in financial management right so you have uh, gross profit ratio net profit ratio inventory turnover ratio debtors turnover ratio so many are there so where you'll be understanding that capital uh, you know uh, current assets uh, gearing ratios are there uh, quick ratios all of these when you calculate you'll be able to develop a kind of relationship and this relationship will help you understand whether there is fluctuation unusual changes what is there so this also will help you decide correct then reasonableness check there are uh, 10 employees salary is a uh, 10000 per employee so 10 into 10000 should make it 1 lakh correct suppose it is 10 lakhs being shown in the pnl account it's not working okay so 10 into 10000 should be how much 1 lakh so the entire salary suppose you are calculating 10000 i'm taking a very basic amount for calculation so if you consider 10 into uh, 10000 into 10 employees 1 lakh every 12 months so 12 lakh should be the amount appearing in the pnl Or maybe here and there with bonus and all you added, so you, it has to be somewhere near twelve lakh. So thirteen lakh, thirteen point five, eleven, all your acceptable figures. Suddenly they're showing twenty lakhs, or they're showing five lakhs. Problem, right? So that is not reasonableness. So there we are going to adopt what this is the problem that it is not ha happening correctly. So we will decide there is going to be a risk where detailed checking will be done. So this enables the auditor to decide further audit procedures. Correct. Then, modeling tools. Uh, you'll be studying when you actually enter the practical world because there are statistical tools where softwares are available. Uh, these are the techniques which you know uh, statistical calculations are there. Now they're not difficult because we have applications ready for it, so you can use them and do it. All right. Then, how to use analytical procedures? Please mark it very important because this is covered as a part of standard also, and very important area. Uh, forget about what is given here. You think in your uh, understanding. You are the auditor. and you are going to apply analytical procedure so how are you going to decide how you are going to apply it first of all very simple you first look into the factors whether analytical procedure is suitable in this particular area or not so for example when you are looking into the loans now can you do the comparison of the loans because of the liability whether we really have a liability of loan or not for this purpose can we apply analytical procedure no here what is the procedure you obtain external confirmation from the bank and see whether this is the amount due or not correct So you will see whether this particular item can be taken as a part of analytical procedure. So purchase, can you use it? Yes. Sales, can you? Yes. So here you will see first whether the item which I am taking into consideration, whether your AP is suitable or not. So first is AP suitable. So you decide okay, AP is suitable. Second, now after AP is suitable, do I have the relevant details? Is the data available with me for doing any kind of calculation? So suppose you are new in the market, completely new. And you know sales AP can be applied, but there are no past figures only available with you. So if data only is not there for comparison, is AP suitable? No. So first you see suitability with respect to the item which you are checking. Then you see whether data is really available, comparable or not. Correct. Third, you will first create a expectation in your mind. So I decided, okay, I'm going to check sales. So uh, maybe I'm going to decide I'm doing trend analysis. So you saw with the trend, you realize yeah, every year there has been five percent increase in the sales figure. so this year i would expect that 5 to 6% or 4 to 6% could be the expected increase in the sales figure okay so that is the expectation that i did then you see what is really what is happening if these two are reasonably matching things are all good if they are not matching that means we have to apply further audit procedures and see what is the reason for this kind of unusual fluctuation so first you will see the suitability then whether data is available if yes i will develop an expectation first then i will do the real calculation with the industry information and then when i compare the two if the see accurate cannot be because this is what analysis accuracy we cannot have reasonableness is important so reasonably they are there okay fine we are okay with it but if reasonableness also is not there then this will give an indicator risk is there so i will perform additional audit procedures correct so look at the pointers first look at the suitability then look at the reliability then auditor will develop expectation and then if there is a difference the auditor will decide to investigate further by applying further audit procedures i think the concept is clear so if you take the example of the same thing which can you know relate very easily salary so first i look i want to check salary is it suitable ap yes ap suitable in that area yes second is information available yes i have the payroll ready with me so i have the number of employees 
average salary also is available with me because I can have the referral to the offer letters or any other documentation I can refer and I get the information. So that also is there. Third, I first develop expectation. Okay, 10 employees are there, average salary 10,000. So per month, it has to be 1 lakh. That means if I multiply with the 12 months, okay, 12 lakh should be the average salary which I should get. Then you look into the information given with the uh, institute, uh, the organization. So you will see the fin financial statements are portraying a figure of maybe 20 lakhs. So my expectation was 12 lakh. So reasonably, I could have taken 13, 14 also reasonable, 9, 10 also reasonable, uh, sorry, 10, 11 also reasonable. 20 lakhs. Now this is an indicator that something is wrong. So this will enable the auditor to investigate further and then find out what is the reason for this kind of unusual fluctuation. See, there could be a possibility management has a good answer for it. Maybe one employee has been paid really heavy because he's a key manager personnel, a very uh, important employee of the organization and his contribution is very large because of which we are paying him at the premium scale. So they could have a genuine answer for it. Otherwise, this is going to be an indicator that they're simply manipulating by increasing the number of, you know, they're increasing the items. That's it. Correct? Then. Uh, suitability of a particular analytical procedure for given assertion. Uh, obviously, this I has already explained uh, whether it is suitable or not. How will you decide? First of all, for large volume of transactions, AP is suitable. Suppose rent, only two items are there. Will you waste your time in calculating analytical procedure? No. Two items are there, check and finish up. Ten are there, check and finish up. Suppose uh, figures like sales, purchases, salaries and all, where they are going to be per month, per employee, or maybe customers, like lakhs of transactions are going to be there, their AP will be suitable. So you will look into account that large volume of transactions, then usually we are going to apply analytical procedures to reduce our work. Uh, in some cases, even unsophisticated predictive models are there. Unsophisticated means what? No too much calculation. Okay. Like payroll and number of employees and the salary. Unsophisticated. No very simple calculation. That calculation will help me to decide whether risk is there or not there. So analytical does not mean some sophisticated calculation should always be there. Some unsophisticated methods also will help me in some of the areas. Then, analytical procedures can give different level of assurance. At some places, really good persuasive evidences. At some, less persuasive. Like I've given you an example here. If you take like uh, the example of uh, rental, okay? So if the number of uh, premises into the average rent, if you multiply, you'll get a persuasive audit evidence that, yeah, this is the amount of rent which should be appearing. So there you could be like good, uh, it's a persuasive audit evidence which we could uh, use it. But in the contrast, uh, if the calculation and comparison of gross margin percentage as a means of confirming revenue figure, may provide less persuasive evidence. So when you compare the gross profit margin, do you think that comparison is going to enable you to understand sales is correct or not? No. So uh, analytical procedure can be used, but in some places it could be very uh, good. It will give you a persuasive evidence on which conclusion can be drawn. Like calculation of number of premises into per uh, premise rent. This is like you can compare and you can understand. But only when I compare the gross profit margin, the increase or the trend, will that tell, okay, gross profit margin, the sales are, the trend is proper. So revenue is correct. No. They only give an indication that there could not be a misstatement which is very severe or maybe less risk of material misstatement. But can you simply rely on that percentage increase and decrease and say revenue is correct? No. So at some places, it could be very, uh, you know, high assurance can be given at some limited assurance. So depending upon uh, how very you're using it. Uh, the nature of assertion, as I told you, uh, existence, uh, valuation, measurement, these are the assertions where AP can be used. Rights and obligations, AP cannot be used. Okay. Then, uh, where you believe that, you know, uh, controls are very weak, you do not go for AP, you have to perform test of details only, because where risk of a statement is going to be there, AP will not be suitable, you have to do detailed checking of the items, correct? Uh, so, that is where it is uh, user, uh, suitable, so that has already been discussed in the uh, overall framework, so when you're reading, you'll find it very simple. And if you're looking at the big paragraphs, every paragraph, they give you an example. So, example are self-explanatory, you'll understand it, okay? Then... Extent of reliance on analytical procedure. See, analytical procedure is purely based on the information which is available. If information is good, AP will be good. You take any example, right? If you have trend analysis. So for trend, you require information of the previous years. So information is the must. For ratio, you require ratios of, uh, you require the information to compare. Similarly, budget, information is required. Industry information, again, information is required. So basic idea is AP will be successful if the data is reliable. So when will you consider to be AP to be really good? or how much reliance to based on the AP. So there, totally will depend upon the information. So obviously, we'll look at the source of information. The source of information is, uh, you know, uh, independent source, more reliable, internally generated, less reliable. 
comparability if you have uh, industry information available or some comparable data available then the information can be used otherwise the information is of no use nature and relevance it should be currently used or it should be relevant okay otherwise uh, you cannot do comparison of two items which are not comparable absolutely so that cannot be done control so if you are using internal data ensure first the controls are very good on it if controls are good then only you are going to use the information otherwise do not use it correct so basically extent of how much analytical procedure to be used is purely dependent upon the information that you are going to use so if you believe the information is good enough then go for ap otherwise ap is really not suitable so about information you look at the source of the information whether the comparable information is you know available nature and the relevance uh, some people have uh, some industries have a, some businesses have a very bad you know way of projecting something which is really not uh, realistic like for example if you decided to do analytical procedure by performing uh, procedures of comparing with the budgets so budgets have to be something realistic budget cannot be your objective budget has to be what is possible so your objective may be of 10% of uh, profit to be earned but reality is that so don't prepare budgets based on what you have to achieve prepare budget based on what is realistic correct so if you believe believe budget is completely imaginary figures or you know exorbitant amounts put in not achievable that is not a comparable information don't use it it is not relevant okay you will use the budget only when information is relevant reliable correct then controls if the controls are good only then use it otherwise do not use the information for analytical procedure then uh, evaluation of whether expectation is sufficiently precise to identify material misstatement now what they are trying to tell us i told you when you are applying the analytical procedure there is a way you do it you have to first develop an expectation and then you compare what is really available so this comparison obviously will not be absolutely correct it is has to be reasonable so when will you decide that it is reasonable or when will you decide investigation is required correct so that is evaluation of whether expectation is sufficiently precise to identify material misstatement so the expectation that you have created okay so in my example 12 lakh was the expectation so when will i consider the 12 lakh to be reliable expectation first the accuracy with which the expected result can be done that means did i have enough information to come up with accuracy yes i had the payroll amount i had the amount of salary so did i have the comparison with me yes so it is accurate then was the information disaggregated yes correct then was the information available yes correct so based on that if all the three i get affirmative answer that yes expectation which i developed is sufficient enough for me to do the comparability with the real figure and then i'll be able to decide what should be the further audit procedures correct so when to decide whether your expectation is really appropriate to decide material misstatement is there or not there uh, it should be like you should be able to decide with accuracy okay then it should be the amount which is disaggregated and the availability of the information so when you look at the uh, examples given there every point here has been given with an example that will make your concept even more clear okay then uh, what will happen with the investigation of the analytical procedure so once you get the result of the analytical procedure if the expectation and the actual result is um, reasonably correct matching we have no problem uh, we can go in for uh, you know uh, accepting it but if suppose the fluctuation is uh, bad that is un unreasonable then we'll go in for applying the further audit procedures okay then uh, consideration specific to public now one very important thing as an mcq question also analytical procedure is particularly not suitable for one type of entity that is public sector entities basically government sectors okay your what you have and what you spend there is no matching see what is the routine concept of in regular businesses matching concept whatever income you have there is going to be a proportional expenditure for it whatever asset you generate there is going to be a proportional liability that you incurred for it correct so matching concept is going to be there but when you look at the government undertakings what income they have what expenses they do do you think there is going to be comparison no okay the expense that they have the income that they have very rarely you can generate any kind of comparison between them so public sector is exclusively that kind of uh, area or the industry where aps will not be used by the auditor while performing the audit so this one particular thing keep it in mind that analytical procedures are genuinely not suitable for public sector undertakings because there is no kind of relationship that we can establish between inflows and outflows assets and liabilities nothing anything happens there okay so you need to understand what i'm trying to say in a very simple way that their comparison or the kind of establishment that you do doesn't be there okay the proportionate of the income and the proportion of the expenditure you can really cannot match to establish a relationship so basically analytical procedures are particularly uh, not accurate or not appropriate in public sector undertakings
All right. So that is all about the analytical procedures. A very uh, simple topic it is. Uh, for the examination point of view, uh, you will uh, do the definition of analytical procedures and that the analytical procedures are suitable at all the three stages, planning, performing, and uh, completion. Uh, most important at the completion phase. Uh, factors uh, where you'll decide whether AP is suitable or not. Uh, most important is going to be the techniques. Okay, techniques is how are you going to use it. Then how you're going to use, depending upon suitability, whether it's reliable or not, develop expectation, then look at the real number and see then the deviation. Okay, then but uh, suitable for particular analytical procedure but reading will be enough. Rather, I would say the only highlighted points like large volume of transaction, unsophisticated productive, uh, productive tools, okay, different level of assurance. Just have a reading once of it properly so that you'll be able to judge it correctly. Okay, then extent of reliance will purely depend upon the information that you're using. So information, you have to look into the source of information, whether it is comparable or not nature and relevance of the information, controls which are there in place. Then uh, whatever expectation that you have evaluated or developed, okay, uh, that will be considered to be appropriate if you know take into account all the three things, accuracy, disaggregation of information, and the availability of information. Once you perform the analytical procedures, the results will be available with you. If there is unreasonable fluctuation, you are going to investigate further, perform further audit procedures. Because this is like SA315 has given you an indication of risk, and then you respond to the risk by SA330, by performing substantive analytical procedures, correct? Then public sector, it will not be always relevant because there is basically no uh, kind of relationship that you can establish between the income expenditure and all of that. So analytical procedures are basically not suitable for these kind of industries, all right? So this topic, uh, extremely important for the examination point of view. See that you study it properly. If there is any doubt, please get back to me immediately after you listen to the lecture. Uh, I'll be clearing it immediately. Don't keep it pending, all right? Yes, thank you.